So Magog has invaded the Middle East and defeated the king of the south. The west is paralyzed and offers uh, token resistance. No military aid whatsoever for Israel. They're our only ally in the Middle East that's left. And um, that leaves poor little Israel to defend itself. Well, apparently something amazing happens. God intervenes. And in Ezekiel 38, God describes how uh, he will send fire upon Magog. Fire and hailstones, it says. Uh, is this an asteroidal attack upon uh, the enemy of Israel, Magog, Russia, that God avenges uh, not only uh, the enemy of Israel, but really the enemy of the church. And, uh, you know, for a hundred years, since 1917, communism in Russia has waged war against the church. And never has the West uh, vanquished communism as an enemy of the church. And uh, even though God has given us the weapons to do so, the West has not exercised um, that option. And so communism has been allowed to fester throughout the world since uh, it came into existence in Russia. And um, even today, under Vladimir Putin, uh, Russia simply has just changed masks, basically. So we have all the old party apparatchiks of the Communist Party ruling Russia. They just don't call themselves communists. Um, but no doubt they are communist at heart. And, um, and God knows the heart and minds of men. And so uh, it says in Ezekiel 38 that God himself directly intervenes in saving Israel from Magog and her allies. Uh, Israel's certain death, no doubt. Um, even with uh, the Israeli army and the Air Force and... Um, Israel just cannot, you know, can't fight such a large force. It's one thing to fight against small Soviet client states that are Arab, uh, you know, but um, quite another to take on Mother Russia yourself, uh, being little Israel. So God directly intervenes and says, God says he sends fire and hailstones from heaven directly onto the armies of Magog. And this is what we see here. Right? So these armies are actually destroyed right in the field, right before Israel. And in a way, this is a miracle of sorts. Actually, it is a miracle, really. If God's the one doing it, it's, it's a miracle. And it doesn't say that the West is doing this. It doesn't say that Israel is doing this. It says that God is doing this. And this is really the first example of God's intervention in human affairs since Jesus Christ. That really is uh, acknowledged to be from God, right? So this is, there's no ambiguity here. There is no, um, um, you know, misunderstanding. This is directly from God. And um, so all that's left in Israel <laughs> is just a small army. Um, it also says in Ezekiel that God sends fire against Magog, the, the home of Magog, and uh, sends fire against the people who live carelessly in the isles. And so um, could that be... Um, you know, the Arab states, I, I don't know. We don't know who the people live carelessly in the Isles are, but no doubt are related to um, this invasion of the Middle East by Magog. Whatever happens, though, we have these massive destruction of these armies. It is a miracle. It is divine intervention. And it is an asteroidal attack of some sort. So it's an extraterrestrial attack. And... Um, and it stops that war dead in its tracks. And um, could it be that uh, as a result of this, uh, 
of this asteroidal attack by God, could it be that these areas of the country, of the world that I show here, these uh, ex basically nuclear explosions, is, are they so radiated that neither the West nor any other power can enter them? You know, much like when Chernobyl blew up uh, in the mid 80s in Russia, you know, that whole region which Chernobyl uh, power, nuclear power plant was based in basically uh, is left a ghost town. Nobody lives there now, you know, or at least not then. I don't believe they live there now. So, so this whole area becomes denuded of um, of life, basically, except for Israel. And so, um, after the attack, uh, Israel, it says in Ezekiel 39, uh, names a town after uh, the armies that are destroyed, and I believe it's called Ham and Gog. And um, for seven years, it says... Israel is basically picking up the pieces of not only the equipment that was brought in for the invasion, but also the dead bones of fallen soldiers. And so for seven years, uh, this goes on. So this is why I'm thinking that uh, Bill Salas is on something when he says that the, the, the classic prophecy of the Magog invasion of the Middle East, as per Ezekiel, uh, will not happen during tribulation, which the book of Revelation covers quite extensively, um, but happens before the tribulation. So, but I leave that out there because I think that um, I think that's probably a very good explanation, and it seems to fit in the order of battle. So, um, Magog is destroyed by fire from God, and uh, Russia and her allies. Or no more. They're literally destroyed and removed from uh, the map. And um, that leaves tiny little Israel uh, wounded but quite alive. And uh, could it be that at this time um, that the temple is erected or constructed in Israel to celebrate the divine intervention from God? Uh, for Israel, it could. Uh, at this point, the temple could be built. Although I posit the theory that the temple will be rebuilt during the Church Age, because um, it was destroyed in the Church Age. Just as, to me, it just seems more symmetrical. But uh, you know, God's going to do what God's going to do, right? It doesn't matter what I think. So, um, but um, so it's possible that the temple could be constructed uh, after this attack. Uh, before the tribulation, but after the rapture. Um, so we'll, we'll put it out. We'll put the temple out here. And uh, so what happens is, um, now uh, something um, very interesting occurs. Uh, basically, we come full circle. Um, in Daniel, uh, it refers to the ten kings of the West, uh, each king is referred to as a horn. A horn is a symbol of political power, kingly power. And it says, out of the ten horns uh, in the West comes another little horn having eyes and a mouth. Could it be that this description of a little horn um, is a description of not merely a Western leader, not only a Western leader, but more specifically, is describing the presidency of the United States. So let's uh, let's uh, elaborate on that a bit. So since World War II, um, America and Europe have been united, right? And for um, since 1945, America has really taken the lead over Europe. Europe has allowed America in essence, to tell it what to do. And um, Europe, of course, formed NATO after World War II at the behest of America. There was the Marshall Plan of America that rebuilt or helped to rebuild Western Europe. And uh, America today 
um, lends uh, its forces and money and political backing uh, in support of the European Union. So in a way, the European Union is subject to American um, political power. You know, they're not completely independent. So, so here we see uh, Daniel sees ten horns of this, of this future uh, empire, the last empire of the statue of Daniel um, that shows the empires that Israel is to be a vassal state to. And so the ten kings, amongst the ten kings, though, Daniel sees another horn arise. So the little horn is a leader of the West. Question is... Um, question is, is it an American leader or is it a West European leader? Uh, it's quite possible that the little horn of Daniel, the infamous little horn, uh, which eventually becomes the Antichrist, um, is an American. It's quite possible. You know, a lot of um, most Americans. Uh, come from or have Western European descent. And uh, in many ways, America is a microcosm of European history. Um, we were the colony of Great Britain for a while. And then uh, we let in um, Italians and Germans and uh, various other peoples of Western and Eastern Europe. And then eventually we let in other peoples from uh, Asia, and of course, there was the slave trade that came to North America, but also predominantly in South America. So, um, you know, a lot of races make up America. You know, in many ways, we are Babylon, if you will. Uh, whereas Europe is, you know, very much European. They don't have a mixture of races like America does. But um, for uh, this purpose, uh, I think that the future uh, Antichrist, or the leader of the West, the king of the West, the little horn of Daniel, is an American president. And so uh, what we see here after the destruction of Magog, Israel is left militarily defenseless. And so uh, I believe the king of the West at this point will come together with her European allies, or its ten kings, and offer Israel a military pact. And Israel will abide by this pact. They will accept it. And the moment that this happens, this is the moment that tribulation begins.